from Ozarks First. You're watching Color 10 News at 10. Some shocking news for you tonight. The son of the Lambert's Cafe owner has been charged with multiple sex crimes involving children. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Abreu. According to the news leader, 50 year old Benjamin Lambert was indicted this month on five sex crimes, with two of those including sex trafficking of a child. Court documents show Lambert had used his home address in Ozark for prostitution purposes. The supposed sex crimes took place between April and and August of 2015. He was indicted by a grand jury in an Ozark and arrested in New Madrid. Because of this, details are scarce and it's unknown where or if Lambert is in custody. Lambert's Cafe has provided a statement. It says, We were surprised and saddened to hear the news and charges of Ben's indictment. While Ben is the son of Norman Lambert, he has not been active in the management of the store in recent years. It goes on to say this indictment is strictly related to Ben's personal life. If asked, the cafe says it will cooperate with authorities and will continue to be a destination for family entertainment. Well, Governor Mike Parson was in Ava, Missouri today to honor those listed on the wall that heals. It's almost an exact replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall that stands in Washington. Color 10's Francis Lin attended this special ceremony and spoke to the governor. Francis, what was the ceremony like? Well, Jen, the wall came to Ava from Fairfield, Iowa. Dozens of people showed up to pay their respects, watch the governor's speech, and listen to the family members of the six Vietnam War veterans who died, whose names are carved in this stone. It's important for us to be able to bring this to these towns so those veterans who can't make it to D.C., those families who can't make it to D.C., can have um, the opportunity to come and to heal. We spent a few days in in uh, D.C. touring around, but we missed the wall. It was, there was just scheduling and a big crowd there, and we just didn't get to go. So I was glad to hear it. I was going to come here, and it's been a great, uh, it's a powerful experience. It's a powerful feeling. Kevin Overhaul and other participants told me how thankful they are to have the wall in town for a few days. Uh, very emotional. I just, it just breaks my heart at all the people that was killed over there for no reason. And I'm thank, thank God that this little bitty town had the nerve to bring, I mean, all the people at work to get it here. And it's simply amazing. Site manager Juliana Blaylock explains how they brought in the wall on Tuesday. We escorted it in with over 500 motorcycles and vehicles in the escort. So it was the largest one I've ever seen. The replica wall itself contains more than 58,000 names and stretches 375 feet long. And they're ordered in chronological order by date of death, and they start and end at the apex at the highest point. Governor Mike Parson also showed up to pay his respects for the Vietnam War veterans. America owes a debt of gratitude to the soldiers who gave their lives defending our freedom. I just couldn't believe that such a small town like this would, you know, bring something like this into Ava. Yeah, I, I, I think any time the, the heart and soul of Missouri is in these small towns all across here, and when you see the respect, the patriotism that they have here in these towns, just like today, you're in Ava, Missouri, and you look out here and you see how big a crowd this is and how many people are here showing respect for, for the veterans of this country. Out of the over 58,000 names, eight of them were women, and the youngest person on the wall was only 15. Now, after Ava, the wall will travel to Middletown, Indiana, next. Certainly a powerful and emotional experience for those attending. Thanks, Francis. Well, another special event this morning. Hundreds of emergency responders took time to remember those who sacrificed their lives on the darkest day in American history, 9-11. While it may be a few days past the anniversary, our Jesse Inman met with those at a memorial stair climb to explain why the event means so much over 17 years later in this story that is positively over. Arcs. Fallen heroes from September 11, 2001, were remembered this morning at the sixth annual Springfield area 9 11 memorial stair climb. Safety coordinator Mike Novak explained how Plaster Stadium was used as the setting for the climb. We climb the equivalent of 110 floors, which was uh, how tall the World Trade Center was. 
and uh, um, we we do that. Uh, certainly, we don't have a 110-story building here, but uh, but we do that in a series of steps here at the stadium. The target goal for the number of climbers is 343, which is how many emergency responders lost their lives on that day or due to health complications from the attack later on. We've grown to, uh, to nearly that number this year. So uh, we, every year we just uh, we keep uh, increasing the number of climbers. The stair climb hits close to home for the guest speaker this year. I was at both the 93 bombing of the World Trade Center and the 2001 bombing of the World Trade Center as a member of the New York City Fire Department. Video and images of the planes hitting the towers are unforgettable, but retired fire chief for FDNY Michael Dugan actually lived through 9 11. On September 10th, the day before, we had a party rededicating a firehouse that had been renovated, and we were out of it for a year and a half. There were 11 men at that party who did not see the next night. Dugan says lessons can be learned from back then and applied to the sort of fractured state he says we live in today. If we remember what we were like on September 12th, 2001, we will be better. We were all Americans. We didn't care whether you were Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative. It didn't matter. We were Americans. We didn't care about race, creed, color, sexual orientation. None of that mattered. We cared about being Americans, and I think we have to get back there. In Springfield, Jesse Inman, Ozarks First. Wonderful to see our community coming together to honor those impacted. And climbers paid $35 to register, and those proceeds go to the National Fallen Firefighters Organization, which benefit the survivors of 9 11 and those who lost loved ones. You can find out more about the organization in the link to this story at OzarksFirst.com.